This is a DVD that uh, I helped produce in England uh, a number of years ago. It's a horoscope of John F. Kennedy Jr. using esoteric astrology. There's a very important thing about this that I want to tell you that had to deal with, with me. Uh, and that was in 1980, I met Douglas Baker for the first time in Columbus, Ohio. And that night I had a dream and the dream was unlike any dream I have ever had before or really since. And in the dream, I was looking at the midnight sky and there would be flashes of light that would turn into astrological, the 12 signs of the zodiac. And I knew it was telling me something very, very important. In the dream, in the center of the wheel of the zodiac was the sign of uh, the, the all-seeing eye of Horus. And uh, years went by, 14 years or so. I never told anybody about my dream. Never told a soul. And Dr. Baker called me one day and asked for financial aid to make a video uh, of the horoscope of John F. Kennedy Jr. Again, I never told him ever about my dream, never told anybody. And uh, so I, I sent the money and then when the film was, the, the DVD was produced, to my amazement, the opening scene of the video was my dream that I had had 14 years earlier. Absolutely true story, absolutely true. Hmm. So we're gonna begin uh, right now with a, it's about 48 minutes long and uh, it's uh, beautifully scripted and narrated by Dr. Baker where he explains the horoscope of uh, John F. Kennedy Jr. All right, Helene. So this is this is it. Is the volume up on the? This is my dream right here. Right here. It's my dream. Amazing. Huh. True story. See that? That's my dream right there. It wasn't moving that fast. It was moving slower. And yes, you saw the symbols. That is the controller over there. This is not working. I think that's it. We come now to our next device. We have deliberately selected a famous person. Life was well known and documented. You have to mute your phones, people. Still hanging out. recognized globally. A man of great celebrity, especially in the USA. In this presentation, you will see how beautifully the course of the native's life and indeed his untimely death. They have to mute their I'm, I'm trying to mute them, yeah. He was the heir to a dynasty. <clears throat> American royal family. A prince of Camelot. Everything was open to him. He could have become 
become anything he wanted. His name was his passport to fame and fortune. But one hazy July evening, John F. Kennedy Jr. climbed into his Piper Saratoga plane, taxied down the runway at Fairfield Airport, and took off for Martha's Vineyard. He was never seen alive again. A novice pilot of one year, he was on his way to a gathering of the Kennedy family for his cousin's wedding. With him in the plane were his wife, Carolyn Bessett, and his sister-in-law, Laura. Flying conditions were poor. The recent paragliding accident had injured his ankle, raising questions about his ability to operate the plane's pedals. An hour into flight <coughs> and radar reading showed the plane descending sharply towards the sea off Martha's Vineyard Island. Then it battled. When we first picture John Kennedy Jr. to ourselves, we have to call up his famous father to our consciousness. The tent house is the house of the father, but it is also the house of very important people. And John Kennedy Sr. was important, and he was famous. As a VIP, he was the most powerful man in the world. He was the President of the United States. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Germany is located on the cusp of the tenth house. And Venus, as the ruler of Germany, is in the fourth house, the house of the family. And so the famous father brought to his family the luster and renown of the celebrity. And Jupiter, also in the fourth house, and close to Venus, magnified and extended this luster to the larger family group. The aspect is Jupiter conjunct Venus and Capricorn in the fourth house with Sagittarius on the cusp. And we interpret this as both the importance and the gloss of the father are extended to the family group. Notice that Venus is very close to the cusp of the fifth house, just one degree away. Venus therefore shines much of its light into the fifth, which is the house of royalty. To many Americans, President Kennedy was the founder of the new dynasty, a dynasty with all the shine of monarchy. It was Camelot. The fifth house is also the house of the father-son relationship. So some of the gloss of the father inevitably brushed off onto the son. However, in the fifth house we find Saturn, the planet of sorrow and suffering, casting a pall of tragedy over nearby Venus and Jupiter. The father-son and extended family relationship is cemented in with the heavy karma of Saturn and Capricorn. The 
full aspect is Jupiter conjunct Venus in Capricorn in the fourth house with Sagittarius on the cusp, conjunct Saturn in Capricorn in the fifth house with Aquarius on the distal cusp. Both the importance and the gloss of the father are extended to the family group, encircling them also with heavy karma. The load of heavy karma, encircling the Kennedy family is well known. I have pointed it out many times in my lectures and seminars for 25 years. It is related to their previous lives as Caesars in ancient Rome, and who as Caesars were cruel and unscrupulous. They have reincarnated together to work off karma. Armor of Saturn is of long standing, going back many lives. Its action is protracted and dragged out and is often hard to prove. And it is aggravated further by the ghastly cruelty of the Catholic Church and faith, which the Kennedys embrace. <coughs> The Kennedy fortune was built by the patriarch of the family, Joseph P. Kennedy, but was marked by tragedy from the beginning. Joe's eldest son, Joseph Jr., a United States Navy pilot, is killed in 1944 while flying a secret wartime mission. His plane packed with explosives destined for a German target, blows up over the English Channel. The daughter, Kathleen, alienated from her strict Roman Catholic parents after marrying a Protestant, dies in a plane crash in 1948. President John F. Kennedy, having inherited the family's political mantle after the death of Joseph Jr. is assassinated in Dallas, Texas on November the 22nd, 1963. Senator Bobby Kennedy, JFK's brother, is assassinated on June the 6th, 1968 in a Los Angeles hotel, shortly after winning the Democratic Party's Californian primary. Senator Edward Kennedy is involved in a car accident on the island of Chappaquiddick, just off Martha's Vineyard, on the night of July the 18th, 1969. His companion, Mary Jo Kopetny, is killed. Edward Kennedy's son, Teddy, has to have his right leg amputated as a result of cancer of the cartridge, a chondrosarcoma, in 1973. Bobby Kennedy's son, David Anthony, dies of a drug overdose, aged 28, on April the 25th, 1984. 1991, William Kennedy Smith, son of Jean Kennedy Smith, JFK's sister, is on protracted televised trial for rape and is acquitted. In 1994, Jacqueline Kennedy <coughs> Onassis dies of cancer in the prime of her life. On December the 31st, 1997, Bobby's son, Michael Kennedy, dies playing ski football. On July the 16th, 1999, John Kennedy Jr., his wife and her sister, die in a plane crash. Notice how it is the family as a whole that is going through this trauma. Even the contemporary branches of the family 
are now displaying the terrible karmic link. The tree is budding and the karma is attacking the buds. It is as if the karma is heavily loaded with Mars and is exploding under the Martian factor, bringing sudden and violent death. In the horoscope of John Kennedy Jr., Mars and Saturn are in clear opposition, indicating that this was a karmic accident. Violence is Mars, and long-standing karma is Saturn. Saturn is also the crushing effects, which would have occurred from the tremendous forces of deceleration on impact frequency. The aspect is Saturn in Capricorn in the fifth house <clears throat> in opposition to Mars retrograde in Cancer in the eleventh house. Heavy karma returns. Incompetence allows <laughs> plane to crash into the sea. Mars blocks and stops things from happening, but Mars retrograde allows, it lets things happen. John was powerless to prevent the plane crashing, especially with Mars and the sign of its fall, Cancer, which is incompetent. It is the releasing mechanism of the karma in the chart, incompetent. Advanced students of astrology should note that John Jr.'s progress moon at the time of the crash was just passing over his natal Mars retrograde. There is no doubt that this activated the release of karma in the chart. Hmm. Mars retrograde also represents the sister of law. Lauren Besson. The third house is the house of sisters. Scorpio is on the cusp. And so Mars rules the house of the sisters. Mars retrograde is a sister who isn't. She's a sister in law. Lauren was not going to the Kennedy gathering herself, but was being dropped off en route. The plane had to make a detour over open sea, which set the scene for the tragic consequences. We can also investigate the third house, the circumstances surrounding the crash, because the third house is the house of short journey. Neptune and Scorpio in the third house with Sagittarius on the distal cusp makes a detour on a short trip over water and loses his way in darkness and mist. If we add Mercury, the aspect becomes Mercury conjunct Neptune in Scorpio in the third house. Air crash said to be pilot error. Extracting the aspect for the whole of the third <coughs> house. Mercury conjunct Vulcan conjunct Neptune in Scorpio, related to the Sun and Sagittarius in the third house, conjunct the neighbor. Piper Saratoga plane suddenly goes into a dive and crashes into the sea, killing the pilot and two sisters, all strapped into their seats. We allocate Mercury and Scorpio to Saratoga 
because the plain was named after the famous battle of the American War of Independence. In astrology, even names are significant. It is also possible to see earlier Kennedy tragedies in the third house. Neptune and Scorpio in the third house. Aunt dies in an air crash. And uncle dies violently by gunshot. Hmm. And on a more personal level, weak and incompetent at handling other people's money, which was said to be true of John Jr. With the assassination of his father and uncle, John grew up, of course, without the presence of a strong male figure to help him develop the self-assertion of Mars and integrate it with the practicality and experience of Saturn. With Saturn in the fifth class of the father-son relationship, he could have learned to make wise and considered decisions to complete projects and become master of his own life. Instead, he played out the role of what we call a rich kid, who might <clears throat> always maintain or afflicted more than blessed by being born with a silver spoon in their mouths. Being born into wealth takes away the necessity to accept the challenges the soul presents them with. It deprives them of the opportunity to gain spiritual staying power. The family situation allows them concessions, privileges, and roles in life that are hard won by those who have to work for them. I'm a Kennedy. I'm a rich guy. I can buy anything. So what if I flunk my bar exam? I start a magazine. Maybe I need $20 million. Easy. I can do anything. I'll fly this plane in the dark. I'll fly it over the sea. The problem with rich kids is that they don't get any real experience. And this was what killed John Jr. He had not had enough experience as a pilot to fly his plane with instruments which have to be used at night. Saturn is the planet of experience and the mastery of material things. But as we have seen in this horoscope, Saturn is afflicted. Another factor contributing to John Kennedy's death was recklessness. The sun in Sagittarius endowed him with a cheerful, outgoing personality and the Kennedy enthusiasm for sports and travel. But it also gave him a love of danger and risk-taking. What is more, with Leo on the cusp of the 12th house, the sun is lord of the house of self-undoing. And with Uranus in the 12th house, square to the sun in the third house, there was a reckless disregard for normal procedures that would have ensured his safety. He liked to play by his own rules instead of by the book, which is Uranus afflicted. It is said that the biggest concern of the Manhattan District Attorney's Office in hiring him as a lawyer other than his failure twice to pass the bar exam, was the thousands of dollars of unpaid parking fine. John Jr. did not feel that Manhattan's traffic and parking laws applied to him. The aspect is Sun and Sagittarius in the third house with Scorpio on the cusp, square to Uranus and Leo in the twelfth. A love of danger, a 
and the disregard for normal safety procedures become his undoing. One is reminded of the myth of Phaeton. Phaeton was the son of the sun god Helios. When he boasted a bit to his friends, they challenged him to prove his ancestry. The young man therefore went to his father and was happy to see him and promised to grant him whatever he wished for. Since he wanted to dazzle his comrades, Phaeton asked to be allowed to drive his father's chariot for a day. The reluctant Helios kept his promise. The youth, however, was a rash and imprudent driver. He did not have his father's skills or experience. The chariot veered out of control, setting fire to the world. Zeus struck Phaeton down with a thunderbolt to prevent total destruction of the earth. Icarus showed the same rashness. Icarus, son of Daedalus, flew too close to the sun in spite of his father's warning. When the wax of his wings melted, the foolish young man fell from the sky and drowned in the sea. Phaeton and Icarus reflect the self-destructive tendencies of those who get too high too fast. Their youthful exuberance and dazzling potential belie their inexperience. Let us now look at the mother in the horoscope. The fourth house is the house of the mother. Sagittarius is on the cusp of the fourth house and therefore the earth signifies the mother. She is in the mid heaven, which means that she is a figure of world renown, often in the public eye. <coughs> the earth is in Germany, the sign of duality. And Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis divided her attention between the United States and another country, which was Greece. And so she influenced her son from abroad, especially through her money, which is Taurus on the cusp. She was very wealthy, and the ruler of Taurus, Vulcan, is in Scorpio. Scorpio is other people's money. She had high ambitions for other people's money. Germany is also the sign of the teacher, and she taught John everything. When he came out into society, he was faultless. She acted as an elder brother to the boy and taught him culture, which is earth and the ninth house. Earth and Gemini in the ninth, with Taurus on the cusp, conjunct the midheaven. The mother is an important person who teaches him culture and provides money from abroad. Gemini relates the mother to Venus and the group of planets on the cusp of the fifth house. Earth in Gemini in the ninth with Taurus on the cusp conjunct the midheaven related to Venus conjunct Jupiter conjunct Saturn, which is in Capricorn in the fifth house with Aquarius on the distal cusp. The mother attracts a wealthy, foreign, swarthy, shipping 
magnet. This was, of course, her second husband, Aristotle Onassis. Another permutation of the same aspect is both the mother and the son were surrounded by a group of wealthy and important celebrities and academics. Andy Warhol. Let us now identify the wife in John Kennedy Jr.'s talk. The house of the marriage partner is the seventh. The sign on the cusp is Pisces. The ruler of Pisces is Pluto. Pluto is rising in Virgo in the 12th hour. The first thing we can note about Carolyn Besser is that she looked like a Madonna. Virgo is the Madonna, and both Pluto and the 12th house rule the Catholic Church. She had silver blonde hair which is Virgo with Leo on the cusp. Pluto in Virgo in the 12th house with Leo on the cusp, conjunct the ascendant. The wife is a Madonna figure with silver blonde hair. John's own Catholic upbringing would have deeply embedded the image of the Madonna in his psyche. It formed part of what Jung would call his anima, the feminine archetype in the unconscious. And the 12th house is, of course, the house of the unconscious, containing at its best all that is wonderful heavenly and miraculous. Her image is like an icon, an outward and <clears throat> visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. Being an esoteric astrologer, I'm always interested in the ascendant. The first house is the house of the soul, and the sign on the cusp of the first house indicates the soul's purpose. John Kennedy Jr. was born with Virgo rising. And one of the interesting features of Virgo is that the father is often absent. Again, the myth of the Madonna. Virgo is the sign of the Virgin Mother and Son, and the Father is absent, he is in heaven. Some of John's associates sense the death wish in his attraction to danger. They believed he had a subtle wish to join his father, his father in heaven. A more esoteric expression of this would have been, of course, to seek counsel with his real father in heaven, his higher self. In esoteric astrology, we look to the ruling planet of the rising sign to see how the promise of the soul's purpose may be realized. The ruler of Virgo is the moon, and in this chart, the moon is in the sixth house placing a strong emphasis on purification. Aquarius is on the cusp of the sixth house. So Jupiter, the ruler of Aquarius, is the lord of the sixth house. Jupiter's location in the chart tells us the area of life which needs purifying. 
Now Jupiter is in Capricorn in the fourth house and is one of a group of planets we interpreted earlier as signifying the Kennedy family karma. The soul's purpose, therefore, is to purify the karma incurred as Caesar's in previous lives. Notice that the moon is in opposition to Uranus and is square to the sun and also to the earth. These four planets form a grand cross, a stressful configuration, which presents a major challenge in the life. The soul has nothing to gain from an incarnation in which its personality is not challenged to establish itself independently, but has again resorted to the taking of other people's wealth. This was one of the cruelty factors for which the Caesars were notorious. And here is an example of appropriating the riches of others in the latest incarnation. John Jr. inherited his mother's wealth, which she had acquired from the world's richest man. Accidents and karma often interfere with the unfolding of the soul's purpose. We don't know what John Jr. might have achieved in expressing his soul, for he died so young, but the publication of his magazine, George, was an exemplary way to express his Virgo ascendant. An effective way of purifying karma is, of course, through hard work and service to mankind. John Jr. had his faults, but he was a hard worker, and he maintained the Kennedy faith and the virtue of public service. In publishing George, he tried to make politics accessible and interesting for the ordinary citizens. The aspect is Virgo Ascendant with the moon in Aquarius in the sixth house, related to Jupiter in Capricorn in the fourth house. Popularizes politics through interview examinations of the famous and their published analyses. John Jr. had found at last a vision, a contribution to society. Shortly before his death, he wrote the printed word influences our thoughts and actions as individuals and as a nation. New ideas change the world in profound ways. In concluding this delineation of John F. Kennedy Jr., what better ending than to paraphrase his father's famous injunction? Ask not what the world can do for you, ask what you can do for the world. All right, so that uh, completes the video uh, on the horoscope of JFK Jr.
Uh, if anybody has any questions, you can uh, unmute your phone or here in this group, if there's any questions. I'll try to answer them. Uh, but that's a pretty good uh, assessment of his life. Uh, summed up through a, a esoteric astrology, which is what we call <coughs> sacred language. The lingua sacra, meaning the sacred language. You see how he took those aspects and he turned them into sentences. And uh, that's what it's all about for the, the next 2000 years. There'll be an astrology that will take on a greater meaning. And it'll be used by school teachers who understand esoteric psychology. They'll cast the horoscope of the child at a young age, and they'll follow them through high school. And uh, using esoteric astrology, they'll be able, and, and esoteric psychology, they'll be able to direct the student to his or her soul's purpose. Instead of beating yourself to death and running into brick walls, and then eventually finding out what your soul's purpose is, or in most cases, never finding out what your soul's purpose is, the children will be guided from a young age into that purpose for which they were born. So if there's any questions, um, I'm open. <clears throat> Don, did you have something? Yes. Uh, it mentioned, uh, Douglas Baker mentioned that uh, it was the Kennedy family was an incarnation of uh, Caesar. A group of Roman Caesars. And they had come back together in order to, to pay off the karma, part what? a portion of it. Oh, no well, my it. question was, did they pay it off? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, so it's... Uh, and, it's and it's going into their grandchildren. See, mm, it's, mm. A, it's, it's affecting generations of Kennedys just recently in the last what three years or so wasn't there a young granddaughter who died from drugs well, yeah, it's, it it's not be. uncommon nowadays but and there I'm was sure. a there was a young girl and I'm not sure there is also a young Kennedy that is very outspoken as far as an alternative news source mm -hmm. so uh, maybe that's a way of a sense of working that out. Yeah, it's a good thought. And and that magazine was to try and introduce Americans to politics mm -hmm. yeah. in a more uh, a palatable way. Right. Yeah. Which is which is very pronounced right now. I get a really bitter taste. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What you hear about politics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the old, especially after. What happened last night? Any questions from the Zoom audience? Anybody on Zoom? No. No. Okay. Uh, another question is when he's making the chart and then he's putting together all these aspects of what is in the chart, uh, I notice how he sort of uh, he explained a, a one sentence of what was involved in it, mm -hmm. the signs. Mm -hmm. But then when he actually interpreted it, they were kind of randomly placed mm -hmm. in the sentence. Is yeah. That, yeah, because one is sign this... can have many meanings. <clears throat> it oh, is okay. more like Neptune or Scorpio. Uh, so they can have any sign can have multiple meanings and he can use them uh, repeatedly. Because the umbrella of the uh, symbol morphs morphs into many meanings. It's like I when I've shown people my horoscope, which is really easy to understand. Uh, Libra, Libra, on the ascendant has many meanings based on its shape. It energizes things like cars and books. And uh, I've spoken uh, publicly about the morphology of Libra or Libra. 
as it applies to my horoscope. One is the shape of an automobile, and the other is the binding of a book. So mm. my, my exoteric purpose was to design automobiles for General Motors, which helped me finance the books that Dr. Baker published and allowed me to, for years, to distribute them through Amazon and various booksellers. Uh, around the world, which I did, part of my soul's purpose. So uh, I'm hoping that uh, uh, I'll be able to produce more videos. That was a thing at a very young age when I first came into the esoteric and I wanted to be able to produce educational videos based on the the esoteric wisdom teachings. Mm. And I think I'll be able to do that. Uh, so look forward to it. Okay. Anything from anybody else? Okay. Well, yeah. I got another one, quick question. One more, Don. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I like that video. It was very good. Uh, have you uh, ever um, uh, come in uh, an awareness that uh, uh, John Jr. is possibly still alive, that no. that, that, that uh, plane was just uh, landed somewhere else out of radar's view. No. Okay. No, I believe in the astrology and he was killed. It's part of the violent karma of the yeah, Kennedy that's, family. That's and we pointed saying. that out in this video. It's you like his, uh, people think Elvis is alive and living in Kalamazoo in a mobile home. You know? Yeah. I mean, there are people, <laughs> yeah, I think people who that. believe that. <laughs> people believe that, you yeah. see? Because they want to believe, they want to hold on to this. This guy's still alive. You know? Still, people believe that Hitler is still alive. Yeah. You know? So. Well, in my opinion, Elvis will never die. <laughs> See, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Christ Almighty. <laughs> That's right. All right, Nancy. Anybody else? Very quiet out there. Well, uh, it was. Uh, it's the summertime. Yeah, it's summertime. Not too many people. Yeah. We had a small go group here tonight. She's Delicious on. food, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm thankful for those who did show up. We'll put this on the uh, on the YouTube, uh, my account on YouTube, and uh, uh, I hope that uh, we can reach many more people with it. It's a valuable video. That was great. And we got a lot of them actually. We have all kinds of uh, we have videos for each sign, of the zodiac, uh, the houses. Um, videos on esoteric healing, reincarnation, uh, biolo the biology of rebirth. And we'll be showing some of those uh, in the near future. I'm looking forward especially to the fall winter season where I'll be doing some uh, what I call fireside chats. Uh, and we'll uh, get into some deep subjects like beyond the intellect, uh, esoteric astrology, the diary of an alchemist, the true authorship of the Shakespearean plays, a lot of interesting subjects. So we have that to look forward to in the months ahead. Now, if there aren't any further questions, we'll go ahead and call it an evening and uh, we'll see you next time. I'm not sure when that will be, if it'll be next Wednesday. I think I'll, I'll be in Indiana next Wednesday. My sister, my oldest sister, who was my best friend, passed away. And I'm in Indiana frequently trying to take care of business there. Mm -hmm. So I'll uh, post it on Facebook when our next uh, esoteric lecture will be. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thanks, David. Thank you. Thanks, David. Thank you. Bravo. Bravo.